a coding interview, you think that your coding ability is the most important thing that you're being evaluated on. As a matter of fact, it's only one of the four axes which the interviewer is interested in. One of the areas where candidates time and time again set themselves out to fail is actually before they write any code at all. The problem scoping phase is one of the most important pillars of the coding interview, and it sets the stage for the coding section. There's four main things you need to do in this area, and failing to do any of these can hold back your final assessment. Before we go over the list, please, just a quick reminder to like, comment for the algorithm, and subscribe to the channel for more information gems like this. Okay, let's dive in. The first pillar is the clarifying questions, and so many candidates just completely skip over this, and it costs them dearly. You need to understand the problem that you're solving, and doing that involves actually knowing what the constraints of the problem are. Now, there's many questions that you could ask, and it's impossible to give a full overview of every single thing you could ask in every single question, but as a general rule of thumb, here are some good questions to ask for some of the common types of problems. For arrays, you can always ask, is the array given to me sorted? This will always indicate that perhaps you need to use a binary search. Can the array contain duplicates? Does it contain only numbers? Can I have null values, some sort of special characters, strings? How large is the array? Can we assume that it will fit in memory? For questions involving strings, you should always ask, does the string contain only lowercase English characters? Does it contain any white space? Does it contain any special characters? And do we know what these characters might be? Can the string contain any sort of Unicode characters? When it comes to trees, you can always ask about, how will the tree actually be given to us? Will it be given to us as a node class where you have a value, a left and a right pointer, or will it be given as an adjacency list data structure? Can we assume that a node will have a value and an optional left and right child pointer? Does the node have potentially a parent pointer? Can we modify the node or add any fields such as a parent pointer? Is it a binary tree or a binary search tree? Can the tree contain duplicate values? For linked lists, we could ask questions like, are the values in the linked list sorted? How large can the values of each node in the linked list be? Is the linked list doubly linked? Am I allowed to modify the linked list in any way? And how long can the linked list be? As some general questions, you can always ask, can I modify the input? This may make things easier for you. Am I allowed to use any extra space or is the solution expected to actually be in constant space? And does the result where applicable count as extra space? These are all things that you should do before you actually get into trying to propose an algorithm because it will help you understand the scope of the problem and what you can and cannot do during, you sol uh, during trying to actually solve it. Too many candidates completely skip over this part and it's a big red flag. The second part of the problem scoping phase is actually proposing an algorithm and explaining how it will work. This is where you take your clarifying questions, you take the prompt of the question, and you actually give the solution. Luckily, most of you guys have watched my channel, you know that most of the time you're gonna be asked questions from LeetCode, so you should have already known what the, the solution will be, so this part shouldn't be too bad. If there's multiple solutions, you can present them, give them to the interviewer, and discuss any sort of um, pros and cons of each, which is actually number three. If there's any kind of multiple algorithms available, then discuss the pros and the cons and agree with the interviewer which one to actually go with uh, before going forward too many times. And this is one of the biggest red flags you can make in this section is you read the question and you immediately trying to start coding. This is like absolute nuclear. You're probably going to set yourself up for failure because if you're rushing to start coding before understanding the question, then I guarantee you that the rest of your sections aren't gonna be good because you're completely reckless. The last thing is just to explain the time and space complexity you know, what is the time complexity? What is the space complexity? The interviewer may push back if the figures you give are wrong, but typically, again, because you guys have practiced these questions so many times, you should be able to just give them off the top of your head and there's no problems there. Once you've done these four steps and you agreed that you wanna proceed forward and you have the green light from the interviewer, then you can actually start coding and there you go, you can actually move to the coding section. So that's been a very quick summary of the problem scoping phase, the four stages that you need to go through and why it's so important to do this because remember, it's one of the four axes that you're being evaluated on. If you completely skip this section, you're probably gonna fail your interview. So you know, you've know you prepped for months for this interview, why blow it? Why not spending two to three minutes to actually scope out the problem correctly? The choice is yours. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave it again a like comment for the algorithm and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I will always, as always, see you in the next video.